Now, this is almost perfect, but I know you, and I know that you're not going to tolerate almost perfect, and you want totally perfect, so let's do that now. In this video, we're going to be tackling that super annoying problem of curtain wall corners in Revit. I'm going to be showing you how to apply different kinds of mullions, some tips and tricks to do that more efficiently, and then I'm also going to be showing you how to create a clean and elegant kind of glass uh, corner that doesn't have any mullions. Let's go. Now, before we jump into Revit, I would just like to ask you to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com. I'm going to link it up just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above. There you can find all of my Revit courses. I've got over 140 hours of content and I'm adding more each month. I've recently uh, released a new course on materials in Revit, so that's something that you might want to check out. Uh, also there, you can find some of my ready-to-go uh, customized Revit templates. You can find some really high high quality Revit families, and we also have a plugin which you might be interested in. Okay, so now without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So uh, I'm just here at the home screen. So let's now first create a curtain wall corner. So I'm just going to go here to walls. And then for the curtain wall, we have to scroll a little bit down. And then here we have these curtain walls. I'm going to jump to storefront because that one has pretty much everything you need. And then let's go like this and create a corner like so. So by default, what Revit is going to do, it's going to create a curtain wall and that wall segment is going to end with just a kind of a blank mullion. And then the other wall segment ends with a blank mullion and everything is overlapped and it looks horrible. Let's actually change the scale here to 1 to 20 so we can see it better. See, these two are overlapping and it just doesn't look right. Also, if I were to go to the 3D view, this is what that would look like. So here we have that overlap and if I go to shaded, perhaps you can see that here we don't even have a joint, so it just doesn't look right. So the first approach is to use a corner mullion. So to apply a corner mullion, what you need to do is you need to select one of these corner mullions that we have here. So you can select it by trying to move the mouse quickly, or not quickly, but kind of precisely. Uh, but what I prefer is just to kind of put the mouse at the vicinity and then use the tab key a few times. In this case, it was three times. And then you can see the, uh, the mullion highlighted. And now if I click, I've selected one of the mullions. Uh, does it re really matter which one? Uh, it's only important to select one of them. Now I want to select the rest of them on this vertical grid. Now instead of having to go and use the tab key and control key to select all of them, easy, easier, it would be easier to just right click here and then go to select mullions on the grid line and then it's going to select the entire grid of those vertical mullions. Now we want to unpin them all. Again, you can click on each one or you can just click here on the unpin button and it's going to unpin them all. And then you have to go here to the properties and here you have those corner mullions. Uh, now with most kind of basic templates, you're going to have these. If you don't, you have to load them in, but in this case we do have them, so let's apply them. So now you can see here we have the circular mullion, so that's not a corner one, and we have a rectangular mullion, which also isn't a corner one. The rest of these are corner mullions. So you have L, quad, trapezoid, and V. So let's start with the L corner mullion. So what this will do, it's now going to create that mullion here, but it's overlapping with the mullion on the other side of the wall. So with this one here, and it's actually going to bring up this error saying that this is happening. And it's asking you, do you want to delete the mullions on this wall here? And you do want that. So just hit delete mullion. And now you have just a single set of vertical mullions on this grid, which is connecting these two walls. And this is what that looks like. Uh, now, of course, you can replace them and you can try the other ones. So let's see what the other ones look like. So in interest of saving your time, I've created these because it's the same process. So why waste time creating all of them? So basically the first one that we have created was the L corner mullion. It looks like this. So basically that piece is kind of shaped like an L here in the level one floor plan. This is what that looks like. Then we have this quad corner mullion, which is basically like a simple square. I think that looks perhaps most elegant out of all of these. So just a simple square and that's the quad. 
Then we have the trapezoid, which looks like this. So it's kind of like a chamfered edge or something like that. So I don't really like that one, but yeah, if, if this is your cup of tea, you have that option. Uh, and then finally uh, here, if I go to the V corner mullion, it's basically L but in reverse. So it looks kind of similar to what you get if you just didn't do this and had that ugly overlap. So I don't like this one either. But again, if this is something that's required for the project or perhaps it looks nice for your design, yeah, you have that option as well. So those are all of the kind of pre-created uh, mullions that, or corner mullions that come with Revit, and I have shown you how to apply those. Now let's go for the interesting part, which is how you create basically a corner with no mullions, so just glass. And let's just hide these levels so they don't kind of get in the way. Okay, so basically here we have the same kind of curtain wall segment. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to select uh, both of these vertical mullions. So what I'm going to do is just make a selection like this of the mullions only. I'm just going to unpin those and then I'm just going to delete those. So now we have no mullions here and we have that glass which is kind of overlapping. Now what I like here is the fact that these mullions, the horizontal ones, are really coming together very nicely. So you can see they come in at the 45 degree chop or cut and they look really good. But the glass is kind of overlapping and that doesn't look good. If I go into level one, uh, you can see here, yeah, that glass isn't where it should be or it's overlapping, which isn't good. Now, what you'll notice here is we have these uh, lines uh, uh, through the center of the, of the curtain wall and these, uh, this glass is kind of offset from that center line of the wall. So we just need to bring the glass closer to the center line of the wall and that uh, cut may look better. So let's see how can we do that. Or in this case, let me see, this might be actually the other way around this wall, yeah. Okay, so this is also something that might happen. So here we now have a gap and I think now it's the correct. Uh, 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 positioning of the wall. Uh, so anyways, again, here we have the gap. It's either overlapping or we have a gap. However you look at it, it's wrong. So how do we fix this? Well, what you want to do is you want to select one of those glass panels. Uh, so here I'm just going to use the tab key a few times, select the glass panel, and then you don't even have to unpin it, I think. You just go here into edit type. And then here you have this offset. So basically under constraints, it has an offset of 37 millimeters. If I drop that down to zero and then hit apply, okay, this will come in to the center line. And then here, as you can see, if I now select that center line, it's going through the center of the class, which is really good. However, we still have an issue here where it's still kind of not overlapping perfectly. We still have that little corner here at the edge. And if you're rendering this kind of at close up, it's going to look weird. So let's fix that as well. And for that, again, we have to select one of these panels, go into edit type, and now we have to actually give it an offset, which is the half, half of the value of the glass uh, thickness. Now here we luckily have the thickness of the glass, which is 25 millimeters, so we only need to apply half here. Uh, now in this case that's really simple to calculate but I want to show you another tip when it comes to cal uh, calculating in Revit. Whenever you have to add a value that you have to kind of calculate in your head or with a calculator you can actually do it in Revit. So here instead of me typing 12.5 I can type equals 25 divided by 2 and hit enter and it's going to do that calculation for me. So if you had something a bit more complicated, this is a really good way to get uh, that calculation done. And now if I hit apply, well, I think it went the other way around. So let's add minus here and hit apply now. And there we go. Now we have the correct positioning and it's overlapping. Now this is almost perfect. Uh, I, I think we're getting there, but I know you and I know that you're not going to tolerate almost perfect and you want totally perfect, so let's do that now. Okay, so what I'm going to do for that is instead of using these regular glass panels, we have to create a new wall type, a regular wall type, which is going to stand in for glass. So basically what that will do, see here how it's kind of overlapping, and if I were to create uh, just a piece of wall, and at the corners, 
it's going to be clean. So basically walls have better behavior than glass panels in terms of corners. It actually allows it to join together. So what we'll do here is just go to wall and let's go to this generic 200 millimeter wall. Let's place a segment here, select it, go to edit type. And then here I'm going to duplicate this and let's call it our glass panel wall. Okay. And now I'm just going to add the thickness of that glass, which is 25 millimeters. And then here, instead of searching for material, because I know exactly how it's called, I can just type in glass here and it's going to recognize that material, which is really cool. Just another uh, good tip and interesting behavior of Revit. So anyways, let's click OK here, apply. OK. And here now we have that glass wall. Uh, now I can simply delete this wall and now what they'll do is I'll come here, uh, make a big cross selection like this, go to filter and then check none, check curtain panels, hit apply and OK. So now we've selected the curtain panels. Now we want to replace them here but they're grayed out because they're pinned in place. So you have to unpin them by clicking on the unpin button and now you just have to exchange them from the system panel glazed to that, uh, let's find that, where's our wall? Glass panel wall. Okay, so we just replace it with that. And now if I come here, as you can see, now it's a clean join. So if I go into level one here, you can see this is a perfectly cleaned, clean join. Uh, now in this case, this doesn't have that offset. So what we can do, and, and the glass does that we have applied. So we can just select one of these glass panels, go into edit type and just remove the offset that we have kind of played around with. And now everything is perfectly straight. And now here we have that elegant corner completely clean with no overlapping lines. And if you render this, it's going to look perfect. And I'm, I'm guessing this is what you were looking for. So there we go. Uh, that's how we can create all sorts of different, uh, different uh, corner uh, situations for curtain walls in Revit. Uh, thank you for watching. And if you want to get this Revit project file or any of my other Revit project files, you can find them on my Patreon page, which I'm going to link up just below this video in the description and then also up in the uh, cards above. So check it out there. We have over 500 Revit project files so far. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos. And also, I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.